23, Proverbs chapter number 23. And while you're turning there, I also want you to return to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, Proverbs chapter 23. Let's all stand as we read the word of God this morning. Proverbs chapter 23, and we're going to read verse 26. Proverbs 23, 26. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 26, my son, give me thine, what's the next word? Heart. Heart. Why? He says, and let thine eyes observe my ways. Now, what, why, why is he saying that? Because the Bible says, out of the heart are the issues of life. Now, go to um, Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. And verse 5. Romans chapter 2 and verse 5. If you have it, say amen. Amen. Scripture says in verse 5, says, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. As much as we like to talk about the love of God, there's still that judgment of God. Now, I want to take this thing about the heart. God says, give me thine heart. I'm going to talk to you right now in the next few minutes. And I don't, I I hate to say this. I don't plan on being lengthy this morning, maybe just a little bit shorter than normal. But I'm going to talk to you about this time, this topic, the call for the heart, the call for the heart. Father, would you take these next few minutes, allow me to be a help to thy people. Lord, I want all of us today to understand there is a, there's a battle for a heart. God, we've got to protect what happens with that heart, how, it, how it's conditioned towards each of these. Would you allow me to be a help to your people, please? In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. There are three voices that call for your heart. Let me illustrate. Um, Brother Hall, why don't you stand up? The first voice that calls for your heart is God. Say that with me. The first voice is who? God. Then we have a second voice that calls for the heart. Um, brother, brother Turk, why don't you stand? Um, we're going to call this one self, self. So the first one is who? It's God. Say it with me. Is who? God. The second one is who? Self. Go ahead, brother Dorian. You're the third one. You're the elected one. Um, the world the world. So we have three voices calling for the heart. We've got, first of all, we have who? We have God. Then we have self. And then we have the world. And here we are. You're going to represent the average everyday person. Just stand right here. Now, all of these are calling to him. That everyone wants him. God wants his heart. Um, um, yeah, this is already, yeah, self. What, you see how that evil on his face right there. Um, self wants his heart. And the world wants his heart. Everybody wants his heart. Whether from the time that you're a child to the time that you die, get this now. Um, we have who's calling for the heart? We have God. Then we have self. And then we have the world. They're all calling for our heart. Why? Because the Bible says out of the heart are the issues of life. Now, whichever one I listen to, get this now, determines my heart for the other. You with me so far? So he listens that God calls him and he listens to God. His back will be turned towards um, self and the world, and they will not be enticing to him. Follow me very carefully. But he comes over here, and, and, and he says, I'm going to listen to self. Get this now. Now, so he listens to self. Because he listens to self, his heart will not be warm towards God. Right. Now, get this now. But because he's listening to self, he's also facing the world. Yeah. Now, never, listen now, never do you listen to self with Without eventually listening to the world. So I'm either going to listen to God and have my heart towards self 
and the world and say, I am not going to listen to them or I listen to self and, and have a heart that is not right towards God, which eventually leads me towards the world. Now, get this very carefully. Come back right over here. Um, I hate to keep you awake in church. But anyway, and um, so, but here we are. Get this now. This right here sometimes is not bad. This is just doing what I want to do, not what God wants to do. With me so far? Illustration. Um, God called me to be a pastor. But let's say self says I want to be a businessman. That's Now get this now. Being a business person is not bad, but it's bad if I'm not listening to God's will. You with me so far? Um, now, now I, my, the, best, the best joy in life comes from here. But if I, re, if I push God back and I say I want to listen to self and do what self wants me to do, even though it's not bad, get this now, it's still wrong and it pushes me away from God and eventually will lead me to the world. The world. Yep. Amen. There is a pull from the world through self to get your heart. Yeah. Right. Oh. That's right. So the world is trying to grab your heart through self. That's right. yeah. God says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, He says, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God says, you come to me. He says, you come. Let's reason together. Let's talk about it together. He says, let's just talk about your sins. He says, I want to make peace with you. I want your heart, because if I have your heart, I can lead you the pathway to peace. I can lead you the pathway to joy. I can lead you the pathway to enjoyment of life. I can do all of that if I just listen to God. Now follow me now. So we have three voices. All this is introduction. Three voices. We have, first of all, we have the vo- what voice is calling us? We have everybody. We have what? God. Then we have what? Self. And then we have who? The world. Then, get this now. So come back over here. Now we have three conditions of the heart. Write this down. You got a soft heart, you got a hardened heart, and you've got an impenitent heart. Yeah. Yeah. I want to write I want you to write that down. You have a soft heart, you have a hardened heart, and you have an impenitent impenitent heart. That's a I would say that one five times. <laughs> so what is a soft heart? Soft heart is pliable. Yeah. So if I listen to God, God can work with my heart. Amen. Right. Get this now. If I listen to God, my heart is pliable towards God. God can tell me to do anything and I'll do it because I have a pliable heart. But if I listen to self, get this now. Yeah, boy, he's getting good at this. I listen to self, my heart becomes pliable to self. The thing about self, self never stops changing. Self continues to drift towards the world to eventually the world gets my heart. But get this now, so we have the first condition of the heart is a what? Soft heart. Say it with me. It's a what? Soft heart. Now, there's a second one, harden. What's the word hard? means resist. Yeah. yeah. Resist. It's pushback. Come here. So, a soft heart means I have a pliable heart, which means now I resist something else. Yeah. Right. You with me so far? So, if my heart, yeah, I, if my heart is right, is listening to who? God. Then I resist what? Self. And I resist what? The world. You see, that's the key to the Christian life. How do I have victory in the Christian life? I get a heart that's soft towards God. That means my ear will be listening to God's call. And then I resist self and the world. And I can live a life for God as long as I have a soft heart towards God to listen to his call. I know you got to use your brain a little bit this morning, but follow me very carefully. So we, first of all, we have three voices. Talk with me now. We have, we have which voice calling us? We have who? God. And then we have who? Self. And then we have who? The world. And there's three conditions of the heart. First one is what? Soft. The second one is hardened. That means to what? Resist. The third one is penitent. Impenitent. I-M-P-E-N-I-T-E-N-T. Now, what does that mean? Get this now. It means it's no longer affected. My Lord. Yeah. No longer affected. Yeah. 
Lost, I, I wrote this down, lost its shame. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Wow. Doesn't care what others think. That's the impenitent heart. Yeah. Now, I want you to follow me very carefully. Everybody has a soft heart. Everybody has a hardened heart. And everybody has an impenitent heart. Right. Right. You say, preacher, are you saying I have a hard heart? Yes, you do. So do I. But it just depends what you're soft towards that depends what you're hard towards. Amen. Amen. Follow me carefully. <clears throat> so this is who? This is right over here. This is who? God. I know a poor emblem of God, but this is going to be God. Now, th now, I listen to God, and my heart is pliable towards God. Now, because it's pliable towards God, it's hardened towards self and the world, and it becomes impenitent towards self and the world. In other words, he, they, it doesn't even attract him anymore. Doesn't even um, um, allure him anymore. Get this now. In fact, if you could put it this way, he, his heart just becomes, it, it, he, has, he, 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 has a, he, he can't stand sin. And he has that same if he ever does wrong. Oh, I can't believe I've done that. That's right. Hey. Yeah. But... If he has a soft heart towards the world yeah. and towards self, he has a hard heart, get this now, resists God, yeah. Yeah. becomes impenitent towards God, get this now. In other words, he's ashamed to be identified with God. He's ashamed. Oh, I don't want people to know that I'm a Christian. Oh, don't want to tell anybody I'm that. Boy, that's terrible. Why? He's wrapped up in self. As long as he's wrapped up in self, listen, he doesn't, listen, the only ones he doesn't, he says, I don't care what anybody thinks. That's not true. We all care what others think. It just depends which side of the aisle we're on. If we're on this side, we don't care what the world thinks, but if we're on this side, we don't care what God thinks. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right. We get to the point, get this now, in this part right here where eventually we go to the world and we have no shame about our sin that we commit. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I'm going to be a little direct and try to be kind in the same time. I don't know how I want to do that. When I get there, I have no shame that I'm living in adultery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come to church. Come to church. Living together. Doesn't matter what the preacher says. I'm just going to live it because, you know, the law says it's a common law marriage, but God didn't say that. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Right. That's right. Go ahead. Don't get quiet now. Yeah. I'm being kind. Yeah. Um, doesn't bother a teenager when they come to church when they're living over here to, to live a life of fornication. Listen to me, teenager, because you're living over here. Doesn't bother. Daddy, no, no shame to it. Amen. How many of you remember when you was a kid? Before you knew anything of the world, you saw something wrong. And said, oh, you did this. Oh. Amen. Yeah. What? Shame. Now let me ask a question. Do you still do this when you see the same thing? Wrong. Come on now. What happened? Lost our shame. What happened? Stop being pliable over here, and we became pliable over here till we got here where the shame doesn't even bother us anymore. Illustration. Back in the, boy, this is before my time, I think. Um, back when I Love Loosely um, came on the came on television screen. What, did somebody help me out. When did that? Huh? I love it. When, when is it? 50s? 1950s. I Love Lucy came on the uh, came on the airwaves, and one time, those who are old enough to know this, they showed um, um, Lucy and her and he was her real husband walking into a bedroom. They even show them inside the bedroom. Watch, show them walking into the bedroom. Society said you can't do that. Almost that program almost stopped showing. You know why? Back then, America had some shame towards indecency. Amen. Yeah. That's right. But America has resisted God, gone the way 
of self and said, I'm going to do what I want to do to the point that we're here in the world now. And look what television throws across the screen right now. And we sit there and it doesn't even bother us when a man is kissing a man and a woman is kissing a woman and it doesn't bother us. What happened? Resist, resisted God. Look at American society today. We have resisted God. Right. To the point we have no shame about sin. We have no shame about doing wrong. We flaunt it out there. We don't care. We come to church. We'll sit here in church. I go to church and I don't care what the preacher says. I want to keep on doing my sin. Yes, you live over here. The wage of sin is death. Hey, God's spirit will not always strive with man. One day God says, I've had enough. And when his judgment falls, one day your heart will be pliable, but not in the way that you thought. That's right. That's good. Yep, that's good. Three voices call for us. We have the voice of who? God. The voice of who? God. We have the voice of who? And the voice of the? And they're all calling for our heart. Because every one of us has a soft heart. Every one of us has a hard heart. And every one of us has an impenitent heart. I want my soft heart to be on this side and hard towards that side and impenitent towards that side where that side doesn't affect me. There is no lure over there because I'm over here. Can I, let me illustrate. Thank you, man. You can be seated. I may use you again, so just be ready. I've, I've lived a life. My, my parents protected me from, from the world. Amen. I've never had drugs. Never, never taken drugs. Yeah. Never drank alcohol. That, that, it doesn't, it, no lure to me. Right. I'm, my heart is pliable in this area with God that, okay, the smell of alcohol literally makes me, makes me feel upset stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Drugs, I've never understood drugs. I, okay, I played sports in high school. I loved my body too much to, to say that I want to get drugs inside of me and let it destroy me because I know what drugs do. And I said, I, I, I and so it's, it, there's never been a lure to say, let me get a snort of cocaine or a shot of heroin or a smoke of marijuana. Never had that. Why? Because I've had a pliable heart here. It's created a hard heart over there. Amen. Now, I'm not saying I'm sinless. Get this now. We're soft in some areas and hard in other areas. Now, God's goal is that we become completely um, soft towards him and hardened towards self and hardened towards the world where the world's lifestyle has no lure to us. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Let me illustrate. Adam and Eve listened to God's voice. Yeah long as they listened to God's voice, that did not bother them. But the second that Adam and Eve said, and Satan said, he says, he says, God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, ye shall become as what? God's knowing good and evil. Follow me now. You know what he was doing? He was luring them. Eve, listen, and listen. Oh, I can know what's good and bad. Now, is it wrong to know good and bad? Oh, let me tell you something. God didn't want us to know bad. He wanted us to know good because if I only know good, I won't do bad. Amen. 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 But she listened to self. Self said, that can't be that bad. Get this now. What Eve did, most of us would say, that's not a bad sin. Now, hold on. That sin caused sin to come on the whole world so that Jesus Christ had to die on the cross to pay for our sins so we could go to heaven. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Amen. But that, get this now, because they had a heart of self, it led them to a heart to the world that even when God came, they hid from God. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. God came. Adam! Adam! Where art thou? Why? Hiding over here. Didn't listen to the call of God. Came over here. All started when he listened to self. 
And they said, you know, being as gods, knowing good and evil is not bad. Right. Come on. And they listened to self instead of the voice of God, and they ended up over here to where they didn't even want to talk to God. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. Amen. Okay. Let's consider another young man, Amnon. Yeah. Got that Amnon. Amnon was raised right, had a good daddy, was raised in church, knew what was right to do, but he had a friend that got him wrapped up in self. He got so wrapped up, and I don't understand this, in his sister that he wanted to marry his sister. Now, let me help you out. My sister was here last Sunday night visiting. I've never wanted to marry my sister. Somebody help me out. <laughs> just a little gross on this side. I'm just telling you right now. Now, but he had, but what happened? Got wrapped up in self. His, his emotions, get this now. So he, because he got wrapped up in self, he got weird desires that led to worldly living that caused him to push back from God. You say, how does a person ever get there? He gets there not listening to the voice of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Samuel listened to the right voice. And though everyone around him was doing wrong, get this now, he did right. He did right. Their lifestyle didn't even affect him. Get this now. He's living with with Eli's older um, sons who are living an adulterous life and they're living a wicked life and they're doing improper things, immorality with women in the gate. And they, and, but, but Samuel's over here listening to the voice of God. When God called, he says, here am I. Here am I. He's listening to the voice of God. What happened with him listening this way? The voices from down here didn't even phase him. Amen. Yes, sir. Hey. Yeah. Samson listened to the wrong voice. Yeah. Amen. Get this now. So he listened to this voice of self, lived his life for self. Right. To the point when God was trying to speak to him, when God sent the lion that way to try to wake him up, he didn't even know that was God trying to talk to him. Yeah. Let's go a step further. How about Balaam? Y'all remember the remember the story of Balaam? Balaam was a preacher of God. Didn't want he wanted to make the, he wanted to make profit out of the ministry and and become a TV preacher and and get the billions of dollars and and rob the poor so that they can have their little kingdom there on television and make everybody woo about them. God says no, Balaam don't do it. He pushed. Oh, he resisted God. He came over here to win a donkey. God was speaking through a donkey and he still couldn't see it. I don't know which one was the donkey. Come on now. It comes to who you listen to. Now listen. When I use the soft heart right, then the more tender I become towards God, the more shameless I become about sin. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Now I've preached all that. That's all introduction. Here comes the sermon. Don't worry. Sermon's not as long as introduction. There are people in here right now. The preaching happens. Invitation time comes. God spoke to your heart. You resisted God. Anytime you resist God, stand up, men. Anytime you resist God, you're pushing yourself towards self. That's it. That's right. It doesn't matter that the preacher shows you the verses. You're not going to do it. It don't matter if God Himself. And, and let me just stop right here. Okay, let's get to Sunday night church. Yeah. Hey. God says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of... Well, they didn't have Sunday night church in the Bible. Yes, they did. Yeah. Read in the New Testament. There's a guy that fell out of the balcony because Paul preached till midnight. I don't preach till midnight. <laughs> you say, why? Because I'd be sound asleep by that point by the time I'm done. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It's, and you say, well, that's just you, Brother Domley. No, that's God speaking to some of you. I don't care if NFL games are going on on Sunday night, y'all to be in church. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. 
you go ahead and push away from resist God, you'll end up over here to the point that it don't that you'll you'll hate what God wants. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm 55 years of age. Been around the ministry my entire life. And I have watched people go this route. They don't ever intend to go here, but they are so wrapped up in here that it doesn't matter what God says to them, they're not going to do it. Preacher tells teenagers, sit down. And teenagers still want to walk around. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You see, an impenitent heart, whatever my heart is impenitent towards, shows who I'm soft towards. Yeah. 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 That's right. So if I embrace the world, it's because I'm hardened and impenitent towards God. That's why preaching never moves some because they're so in love with this right here. Yeah. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Come on. But when I'm in love with this right here, and I'm not in love with this, it's my son-in-law. But no. When I, sorry. When I'm in love with God, I'm so pliable to what God wants me to be. It doesn't matter what God tells me to do. I'm going to do it. Amen. Illustration. Thank you, man. Abraham. Abraham, Brother Williams, was so close to God, heart so pliable to God. When God says, sacrifice your son, he says, okay, okay. Now, I'm afraid I might have been over here. I'm just being honest with you. I'm I'm your preacher. I'm afraid I might be right here. But if my heart was as close to God as Abraham's was, I would listen to God, understanding, having the faith that God could raise him from the dead. I would have that type of faith. Listen to me. I'm coming this morning begging our church to say, let's have, yes, we have a soft heart. Yes, we have a hard heart. Yes, we have an impenitent heart. But let's keep our heart soft towards God, hard towards self, hard towards the world, impenitent towards self, impenitent towards the world. So that way we do what is right over here. Here on this side. I come to some of you right now. Some of you are not over here. You're not by the world yet. You're wrapped up in self. It's wrapped up, you're wrapped up in what I get, what I'm gonna do. It's me, 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 me. One day that me is gonna turn to the world, and the world will give you what you want, but you won't like the end result of what the world gives you. There are people in this room that have been ran over by the world. They've come back to God and said, boy, I wish I'd have never listened to the first voice of self. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hey. Amen. Because you're headed towards what you're soft towards. Yeah. That's right. That's good. Yeah. If, I, if, I, if I'm soft towards God, I'm headed towards God's way. Doesn't mean I'm ever going to be perfect. Doesn't mean I'll ever be sinless, but I'm headed that way. I'm getting better every day. But if I'm soft towards the self and soft towards the world, I'm heading away from the world or from God and coming towards the world. Okay, James chapter 4 verse 8 says, draw nigh unto God and he will what? Draw nigh to you. <laughs> What's God saying? Right here what I'm teaching. God says, you start coming my way. He says, I'll come your way. If I'm going God's way, I'm not going in their way. He said, preacher, this is so simple. I understand it's simple. But we have made it so hard. We have lost our shame. We have lost that that, that attitude towards sin that it disgusts us. Okay. Let's go back to Sunday school. If you're in Sunday school, you heard about Job. He, he was one that escheweth evil, the Bible says. That word escheweth means that it, it, de- it, it detested him. Yeah. I told my class, I escheweth okra. <laughs> <laughs> you say, why? It's slimy. 
If I wanted something slimy, I'd blow or clean it. But anyway. <laughs> now, I escheweth okra. I can't stand it. The, the smell of it, the thought of it. And then somebody in our church decided my birthday to give me okra capsules. <laughs> Not going to point them out. <laughs> yeah, that sinner's raising their hand right now. <laughs> then she had the gall to say, did you try them? No, it's okra. <laughs> We're going to put beer in a capsule and say it's okay? <laughs> I askew with it. Yeah. Disgust me. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you, you you're, 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 you're pliable. You're soft towards it. You think I'm crazy. <laughs> well, I'm not. You are. <laughs> I, was, I was eating with some Hispanic people years ago, and they said, you want some Nepalis? And I said, sure. I didn't know what Nepalis was. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the Spanish version of okra. <laughs> I went to go dip in that stuff, and I saw the slime coming. I'm thinking, I already told them I'm going to have some. <laughs> I mean, this is not going good. We're going down the wrong path. And I, and I, and I, and I put that, I put the, some of that, some of that cactus, that's what Nepal is, put some of that slimy. Man, my mind went back to South Carolina when my mama made an oat made okra. I was, I, I, to, I excused myself, had to go run behind the building, spit that stuff out. Ah, huh, skew with it, and skew with it. <laughs> Someone said, do you want some boiled, um, 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 oh, help me out, the fish, the, um, oyster, oh, boiled oyster, um, oysters, oyster. raw oysters, you want some raw oysters, no, you say why, slimy, somebody help me out, slime does not go in this mouth, no, don't ask me, I don't care what you ate in Indonesia, not doing it. Askew with it. Hate it. Hey. Now, if you said to me, Brother Domley, you want some McDonald's French fries? Yeah, now we're talking. Um, I, 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 someone, he, my, my son-in-law, and of course you have to understand he's a, he's a Florida lizard fan, I mean gator fan, whatever they are. And he told me that, that um, um, where you used to work, um, Chick-fil-A. Uh, Chick-fil-A has better fries. I said, your, I said, your brain's gone, son. I said, I can't believe my, my daughter married you. <laughs> he goes, but McDonald's fries are greasy. I said, that's why we eat them. <laughs> Somebody help me out. <laughs> to me, everything compares to McDonald's fries. <laughs> now, so he offers me that, askew with it. <laughs> Soft towards McDonald's fries. <laughs> what are you soft towards? Yeah. Amen. Amen. What's your heart soft towards? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. That's right. I'm talking to people this morning. You're in church on Sunday morning. You're better than most of the people in, in the whole Oklahoma City area because you're at least in church. Yeah. You came to church. Yeah. But there's people that come to church that are, they're, they're good people, but they're soft towards self. What self wants. I ha- self has to have his way. Self is always about me. Now, when you live this way, one day you'll live over here because it's not what Alan Domley wants. It's what does God want Alan Domley to do? Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Let me illustrate. Salvation. Stand up, guys. You're lost. I've known that for a long time because you're an LSU fan. (laughs) When he gets saved, he'll become an Alabama fan. (laughs) I'll preach the Bible whether some of you OU fans like this or not. (laughs) Now he's lost. On his way to that, don't shake your head no, Miss Claus. But anyway, when you're soft towards God, God says, I'll save you. Mm -hmm. Uh, You just trust me. 
and I'll take you to heaven. You know what happens? It doesn't matter what the world offers, what self offers. The world says, oh, come on. This guy over here says, oh, that religion stuff's not even true. This guy says, why don't you just try to get baptized? Yeah. This guy says, why don't you live a good life? Yeah. This guy says, oh, but you, but you, you know, you just, you just be good and, and help others out. You could go to heaven that way. But I'm telling you, but when you trust Christ, you look at that and say, why would I want to do that when I can trust the one who died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. I think I'll trust the one that can take me to heaven. That's what I'll do. But when you start listening to your own your own reasoning you think that we over here are shallow because we say trust Christ and you're saved forever. Right. And you say nobody can be saved forever. What does eternal life mean? (laughs) Exactly. He says, but, you, but, but because he's over here, he's going to say, well, but you got to understand, God doesn't quite mean that. Then what does he mean? Yeah. Yeah. Either God means eternal life or God's a liar. Right. 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 Amen. I trust Christ. He saves me. I'm eternally bound towards heaven. Right. But I listen to self and I try self's way. There will come a point that I will even leave self and get so hardened towards religion, towards God, that it doesn't matter who comes. You're so hardened that you won't even listen. And this destination is hell. This destination is heaven. So I chose on June 21st, 1973 to have a pliable heart and trust Christ as my Savior. Because of that, I'm hardened towards anything else. I'm impenitent towards anything. Nothing affects me over there. Now, I can't lose my salvation, but they don't even, they, they don't even, they don't even come in my thought process. Why? Because I have a soft heart towards trusting Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, you're at a crossroads. Some of you are at a crossroads today. Come here. Amen. You're at a crossroads right here. You got voices calling you to be saved. Jesus says, come unto me. Oh, you that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Self says, oh, don't trust that. You got to try to, you got to change your life first. No. Got to change some things in your life first. God says, no, just trust me. I've paid for all your sins. And self says, no, no, you can't, you can't. You think you, you think that's the only thing that's going to save you? you got- Amen. Yeah. No. No. And you're in a quandary. Yeah. And you say to yourself, I don't know who I want to trust. I can tell you this. Anyone who's ever trusted this and this has gone to hell. Anyone who's ever trusted Christ has found themselves in heaven the very split second that they died. So I, if I was you this morning, I'd choose to have a soft heart towards the call of God and say, I'll trust your son as my savior. And then after you get saved, because you trusted Christ as your Savior, you'd be wise to continue listening, having a soft heart towards you. I had someone sit in my office. Thank you, man. I had someone sit in my office, and they said, Preacher, I, I don't understand. I, I, I keep on having this lure towards the world and towards my old life, and I'm trying to get over it. He said, I don't know what the answer is. And I said to him, I should get a soft heart towards God. Amen. That's right. You get the soft heart towards God, you'll have a detest. You'll resist. I think when preaching is going on, you ought to sit down um, and and just listen because you're soft here. Three people calling for your heart. Help me out. God, self, the world. Three conditions we all have. Soft, hard, or impenitent. Whichever way you turn that arrow determines what you're going away from. 
the arrow is pointed this way, I'll be turned away from that. Betray him unto them. I don't understand. If I turn my heart this way, the arrow this way, then I will be, I will, I will not like that. I will detest that. I will resist that. Even though God speaks to the man of God to try to get your heart, I will resist until the point I'm here and nothing faces me. Amen. Have a soft heart towards God, Father. A very simple truth this morning. I think oftentimes we all don't realize Satan just tries to redirect the good that you want us to have. Not bad to have a hard heart as long as it's hard towards the world and self. Not hard to be shameless towards God, but not but it is wrong to be shameless about our sin. He just tries to redirect it. I ask this morning, God help us today to look that there's three voice there's three voices calling us. We must listen to your voice. To serve God my entire life. I was born not I was I said,